Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to this special feature bringing to the fore leadership across technology, communications, marketing and beyond from an enabling diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging perspective, for example, helping to close the digital divide. To do so, I'm delighted to be joined now by Joni Roberts, Chief Marketing Officer at Ribbon Communications, an organisation that's been recognised by Newsweek for its pivotal work in this field. Welcome, Joni. Thank you and thank you for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. And perhaps to start, I'd love to spend a moment just kind of introducing yourself, the person behind the tech, if you will, and your journey into your current role. You know, what's really helped you in your success? You bet. You bet. Well, I've been in telecom for actually 30 years now. I think we're going on 31 years. So it's uh, it's been a long time, over three decades, well before uh, the internet started and Google was around or even smartphones. I started in the early 90s um, when telecommunications, I sold long distance and calling cards and uh, start, started down that path. I certainly, uh, when I started telecommunications, I was one of the few women often in uh, the room and often in trade shows. So as part of that, I call it the 90s wave of women who entered telecom as well as tech at that time. So it, it's been a it's been a long road. It's been a great road. Very uh, grateful for this wonderful industry, and I've learned a lot. And um, you know, I think one of the reasons why I stayed in, in thirty years is I, I have a lot of passion and love for this particular industry and what I do. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's great to see technology uh, impact you know not only businesses' lives but p actual individual lives. So it's been quite a journey over the last thirty years. Um, and, uh, and, it, you know, over the years, it's, it's, it's a lot of times it's learning the technology, understanding your customers, learning a lot about the competitive landscape and, uh, good old fashioned grit and resiliency and, uh, hard work, but definitely over the years and decades, uh, thick skin as a woman in a male dominated industry. Absolutely. I totally relate to that as well as, you know, former CTO roles in telco, but also working feels like blockchain as well. So totally, totally relate to that. And I yes. think visibility um, of that journey matters so much in terms of encouraging other people. And also, you know, in this sector in particular, you know, what a kind of hub of the wheel or catalyst sector for innovation in so many other areas, isn't it? I think that for me, the dynamism of change, uh, that ability to be part of that, to make a difference, I think is really powerful too. So on that subject, you know, visibility matters. I mean, what have you found there in terms of some of the work that you have been involved in, in kind of encouraging more people into this space through that visibility of role models through mentorship, but also things like sponsorship as well? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, again, starting in the early 90s, I would say 90 plus of uh, all executive roles or management roles certainly were men. It wasn't women. And then over the years, certainly we started to see more women, not not a significant amount, emerge both in management and uh, sea levels. And then as I started to go to trade shows over the years, the panels went from all male to occasionally diversity, not only women, but diversity in general. Um, so I think the impact of role models and, and the ability to, that, to, to see people like you, right? So not, again, not only women, but diversity in general, I think is really critical for companies to have, um, you know, not only at their C-suite, but in, in upper management and middle management. Um, and, and it has improved over the years. I, I think overall as an industry, we're still trending lower than other, other industries as far as percentage of women um, in uh, executive roles and at a, at a higher level. So, um, you know, but again, back to the, it, it's been important to have uh, role models. I personally have had a couple great uh, male and female role models, mainly the female role models of women that paved their way in, in their space or their company, often being the first C-suite in their company. Um, and it was great for me to be able to pick up the phone and, and use them as a sounding board. And so I've been extremely fortunate to have some great role models um, uh, over the years that helped me. And, and I, you know, I hope to be that for, for others coming along the way. Absolutely. It's that safe space, isn't it, to share? I think massively important. And I'd also say as well, you know, when you're looking for mentors and role models as well, look at a variety of areas. And you know, social media, for example, sometimes can, can get have a negative rap, can't it? But on the other, an amazing place for community, like communities of practice, people with shared interests, people who maybe are doing that role that you're interested in doing next. And you can get such a you know, powerful community there as well. So I'd always say you know, look at a range of places. 
Um, and what you said there on visibility as well, that relatability, as you said, to see, you know, see people from a similar background or from similar experiences. And for that as well, things like neurodiversity is something I really like to shine a light on as well, because I think that's really underexplored and actually be you know, a superpower, you know, a massive catalyst for innovation in terms of that diversity of thought and perspective. So I love everything you're saying there. Yeah, up, up, up. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Absolutely. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. And I'm kind of linking that to how we support organizations to, to support everybody within. Um, and what I wanted to look at there is you know, the culture of innovation and how we build that diversity and inclusiveness of experience and how we change the narrative and what kind of careers in technology look like and communication specifically. And I think I mentioned earlier, and it's dynamism of change, that agency to be part of something that can have you know, innovation for business, but innovation more broadly for society. For example, you know, improving education, improving access to learning, massively, massively important, you know, the foundation for so much opportunity, isn't it? So how are you seeing and kind of what are you doing personally to kind of help change that narrative in, in roles in tech and business careers and kind of what do you see as the role of leadership in this space to kind of have that empowerment I think I'm trying to say yeah yeah great great question um you know certainly uh women lifting women is important it's interesting to kind of to bring in about the Olympics that just recently happened and I saw it speaking of image I saw a recent image actually it was a, 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 a photograph that was painted over and it was the uh, recent women's um, gymnastics, right? And yes. this beautiful young woman from Brazil took gold. And then we had our two American um, young women praising her and bowing down to her. And to me, that was the epitome of women lifting up women, right? Absolutely. So, you know, different countries supporting each other. And I just thought, what a great visual, right? Uh, because they're all at the highest competitive level but yet they were able to lift each other up. And I just thought that's fantastic. And so, you know, in a you know, bigger picture uh, education and what do I, you know, my past. Um, in my past, I've worked at um, um, years ago and it, it, they, they no longer have it, but it was a, um, a camp for STEM girls around 12 or 13 because they find that's an age that young women start to lose interest in math. It's not that they start to lose interest. They find that they've they feel that young women can't be as smart as the boys. It, it's this whole social dynamic. So I loved kind of, um, participating and volunteering for that for years. It's called Mindscapes here in the uh, mountains. And then in most recent years, I like to volunteer at um, Girls Inc. Um, and I worked in the past on committees on scholarships for these amazing young women who, um, you know, really have a lot thrown at, at them. Sometimes they're daughters of immigrants or, you know, they're some of them are living out of their cars yet maintaining a straight A, um, you know, straight A average at school and, and, and off to college. So I, I think wherever you are in your world, you want to try to participate and help and lift um, young women and young girls and, and just show them that it can be done. Right. So and and also, I think also having an honest conversation, it's sometimes it's just not easy. It, and it is a challenge and it is a challenge being a first, um, you know, but I think organizations like that, I, I think are important. And I think for women in technology, wherever it works for you, whether it's a mentor through your work or you volunteer at it, like a Girls Inc., which fills my cup up when I do that. So um Anyway, so I, I think there's a lot of different ways to contribute to mentoring and, and lifting young young women up. So and as you're going up the ladder, you need to bring them with you. So absolutely. I love that. And and you said well, so many ways to make a difference. And you reminded me of something of one of the first kind of like app developments I got involved in. I kind of said this quite a while ago now, uh, in the telecom space. And we we put something together that kind of matched your local location your interest, your passion area, but we're able to kind of put kind of bite-sized nuggets of time. So mm -hmm. to make it show that, you know, even 15 minutes here, you can match all these things together and that has that ripple effect for change. So incredible. So I love the work you're doing there. Fantastic to see. 
Thank you. And on that note, actually, one of the areas I do a lot of work in too is on this skills area. And I talk about kind of the move beyond STEM to STEAM. So really putting kind of the arts in its broadest form is of equal value as well. And, you know, looking at things like emotional intelligence and confidence and creativity and curiosity. So I love that and kind of the equal value of all those skills. I think they really are about complementary strengths. So I wonder if I could kind of show that question to you because I get asked this all the time as well. You know, what skill do you think is maybe kind of undervalued today or most important what maybe we're not looking at now that will help us kind of stay ahead into the future and kind of be say ambidextrous to these changes that we're seeing yeah yeah great question um and it, i think it really ties in well to why women i think are great natural leaders um generally speaking most women do have the ability to have good empathy and emotional intelligence and they find you know study after study the better emotional intelligence a leader has the better you're able to listen to your organization. And often when you listen to your organization or listen to your customer or listen to the, the competitive landscape, you, you have the ability to drive better results. So um, I think emotional intelligence and the ability to have empathy and, um, you know, every, everyone calls that a soft skill. And I'm like, no, this is this is a hard this is a hard skill that can really um drive better results, frankly, in any organization. So I, I consider it actually good business to have a good emotional intelligence and, and empathy and, um, you know, along those lines. It's interesting, kind of, I'm going to tie in a, a McKinsey report. They, for years, McKinsey tracked diversity and the impact uh, it has at the DEI programs into business. And, um, you know, they found this over the course of, I think it was, eight or nine years, four different studies, with the most recent one in December of 2023, um, that diversity and inclusion actually is good business. And they found corporations and industries that put an emphasis on this and, and had, you know, diversity, you know, women and, 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 and diversity at the level, higher levels actually did a better job um, and had better business results. So it is, there's a strong, strong business case to it. And I think that what ties to that is these, what they call soft skills, which I, I don't like to call them soft skills. I think they're just skills, but of empathy and emotional intelligence and the ability to listen to your organization. Um, you know, ultimately that results into a great business case for companies. So you're absolutely right. And again, there's some other interesting in information and research from a number of a number of companies that we can actually put together as a side note to this as well. So people will drill into this too. But you're absolutely right. And in a few key areas, it's kind of the, one of the biggest kind of catalyzers to, to innovation, but it's also areas about satisfaction and lower churn rate and well-being. There's so many different elements. And also from a, from a consumer perspective as well, kind of the rate of expectation, you know, moving beyond say transparency to accountability, that delivering on inclusion but other areas around the SDGs as well you know that's a that's a different criterion that people are looking at as well so from every area this is an opportunity to create shared value you know business um, innovation but societal innovation at the same time so I, I couldn't agree with you more with that I think that's fantastic